And so I want to begin by, um, by thanking all of you uh, for being here today to talk about a cause that, that really allows each and every one of us to save a life. And in fact, in, in many cases, save many lives. And I know a lot of you do that in your day jobs, but this is, this is different because I'm talking about us supporting the Trillium Gift of Life program, which is an organ donation program that was created several years ago to increase the number of organ and tissue donations, donations in the province of Ontario. And it's these donations that allows thousands of patients on transplant lists across Canada to have hope, the hope of receiving a, an organ transplant that actually gives them back their lives. How neat is it to be able to say you could do that? And it's easy. So today we'll hear about the Gift of Eight movement, where the donation program is introduced into workplaces like the Ottawa Hospital. And in this way, each of us gets to participate in an online registration drive, and it takes just two minutes to do. Um, I think it's even more important that we show this leadership program in this campaign because it all started with the actions of an inspiring young lady who is actually one of our very own staff members, Ms. Ellen Campbell. Back and kind of give you a background of what happened. I um, was in Spain and then was traveling and then did uh, some backpacking in the UK and felt really short of breath, but like I was misdiagnosed with asthma as a child and always believed, you know, I just, I cough and I can't breathe, it's asthma, take your puffers and it should be okay. Well, my taking my puffers didn't really help and I didn't really take them religiously. So um, I kind of thought like, oh, it's your fault, Ellen. you're not doing what you're supposed to, you're not following your doctor's directives, no wonder you're short of breath. So um, I started in Spain, because I was suffering just trying to keep up with friends and stuff like that, I started taking my puffer accurately, because I was like, man, yo soy en España, yo uh, bailar con mis amigos, means I want to dance with my friends, but I can't. So um, I just started taking my puffer, and there was no difference. Then I tried backpacking England and Scotland with a 50-pound bag, and really couldn't keep up. I was like, man, I am so out of shape. This is terrible. And because um, I was alone that trip. I got home, went on a camping trip with my friends, and we just went on a little hike, which I'd been able to do every year before that. And really just, I couldn't keep up, and I collapsed. And my friend ended up having to carry me back to the van. And that's when I realized, OK, I'm 20. You hablas español now. Um, I can walk, but why can't I like? Why can't I do this hike with my friends? Like, what's going on? So then I came to the Ottawa Hospital, and I had collapsed lungs. So initially, they thought it was a tough case of asthma, but with further studies, I had um, an open lung biopsy done, and uh, went into cardiac arrest. I had a code blue, and my physician walked into my room just by fluke, because usually they do the rounds at 9.30. He walked into my room at 9. He had a hunch to come in and found me unresponsive, like here in the hospital. So that just, I think, really, really showed the state of my lungs were in a pretty bad state after that biopsy. So they kind of did more research about it and found out I had idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. I just want to call it PF or honeycomb, because your lungs kind of get like honeycombs. So it's a hardening of your lungs. And uh, it resulted in me needing a double lung transplant. So I had to relocate to Toronto because we don't do them here. But a way to make this positive was to bring awareness for organ donation. Because being put on that list and working at the Riverside Hospital, I worked in the dialysis unit, so seeing patients who needed kidneys as well. And there, is, there are 1,500 people in Ontario alone waiting for organs. And every three days, someone dies because they don't receive the proper organ. And we have the amazing healthcare system here in Canada in place to perform these remarkable surgeries where you can give someone a heart and they are able to live longer with their loved ones or a kidney or you can give 30% of your liver to someone and it will grow back. It's just remarkable that we have what it takes. The thing we're lacking are the organs. The point is I was so sick before this wonderful gift. I received a wonderful 
gift from this donor family who in such a hard time, you know, considered someone else in grief thought of how someone else's life could be improved. And I think all of us, like dealing with situations like writing our will, when we're told we have an illness and a doctor says, have you written a will yet? You kind of get concerned, like, oh my goodness, am I dying? You know, like there are tough questions that come into life. And if we address certain things like writing our wills when we're healthy or having to talk about organ donation when we're fine, healthy, talking about it with our loved ones now, today, then when a time of grief or stress, like something, a stressful situation comes up, that's something you've already discussed and it's a lot less hard to, you know, um, face and then I have the gift of life. And I think it's a perfect time to launch this campaign with Christmas and hope and that spirit of just loving and joy and selflessness. You know, it's such a selfless act. We're not here anymore. We don't need our organs. Give them on to someone else. And I really want to encourage people, have the talk with people. That's like the most important thing. Registering online at beadonor.ca, you can do that. And it's great because they have it in the system. But the most important thing is to let your loved ones know because they ultimately have the last word and say in all of it. So it's to talk about it with those around you. And you can really make a big difference in choosing to be an organ donor.